All right guys, today we're gonna go over attaching Brembo big brake kits to my E36 non-M 3 Series. Uh, started as a 323i. So, here's the deal. As long as you have the non-M front chassis, um, you can use the big Brembo brake kits that go for the E46 M3s, or well, excuse me, just the E46s in general, it's like the 330Is. Uh, that's what this kit came off of. Uh, these were originally black. I tore them down, flipped them, painted them, uh, did my own custom coloring to match my car, black bolts on uh, teal calipers, and uh, redid my Brembo logos. I'm also upgrading to uh, Turner uh, braided lines. The ECS lines are really good as well too. They just didn't match my color scheme with red. So um, I bought these calipers used. Um, calipers and rotors, I got them off the, off the marketplace. And uh, what you want to make sure that you're getting is, you know, one, your calipers. Uh, I rebuilt them. I redid the shoes, um, the pistons, the, you know, the, the brake pads, um, brand new brake pads, brand new dust boots, everything inside these. Um, you also want to make sure that you get this bracket. This is going to be your mounting bracket so that you can actually stand off your new calipers. And of course, you want to make sure that you've got your rotors. Uh, these have a little bit of surface rust on them, nothing major. They'll come off on the first time I use them. But you'll see once I get this other one off that we're going to go to a drastically larger system. So in the back here, you have on the back side, sorry I won't be able to show you because of how we're filming today, but on the back side back here, you have two main calipers. I'm assuming you can get this far. I'm assuming you can take your wheel off with your lug nuts. From there, it's a 16 millimeter on mine. There's two bolts that are facing back towards me. Um, you want to take those off. I've actually kind of, I broke stuff loose, but um, I got them all off with an impact to begin with. Um, and what you want to do is, once you get these two bolts off, so I was, like I said, I, I started mine. I, uh, I took this off just so I knew how to do the do everything. So I wasn't showing you guys wrong information. So first bolt's going to come off. And then there's a second bolt that's going to come off, off the bottom. Your caliper probably won't come off this easily. You may have to wiggle it off. You can pop this clip and pop the, the brake pads out. Or like me, if you're not gonna use these rotors or these you know brake pads anymore, you can put a screwdriver in and open the brake pads up or just pull it off the caliper and just get it off the caliper and out of your way for now. Um, if you're not replacing your brake lines, be careful. Um, I would not suggest that you just let your caliper hang. But again, I'm replacing these lines and uh, I'm replacing these calipers and everything. So I'm just gonna let it hang for the moment, but you generally wanna try to disconnect it. So from there, you've got your um, rotor uh, positioning screw. It is going to be a number six Allen. Um, and so again, using an impact, there you go, not too bad. It came off nice and easy. Save this screw, you need it. Uh, if you have your other rotors that are coming off, so these are the standard E36 rotors, pretty basic, you know, nothing drilled slotted. You'll see, I put them up against the uh, other rotors, they're substantially bigger and they're drilled. So pretty simple, using the same exact screw, line up your rotor. And uh, what I like to do is take my Sock it off. And put that on there. And then you can use it to kind of wiggle around. Stop it from moving so you can readjust. There we go. And generally what I like to do before I set this rotor screw down. I see how it's still loose. So I'll hand tighten it. But then I'll take a couple lug nuts, or lug bolts I should say, in my case, and uh, just going to put them in and make sure they can still find their home, that we're not twisted up so bad on the rotor, or the, the rotor's out of position, that we can't get it in here. So I'll just get a couple of these started, get the rotor out of the way, let it twist around. Okay. And then easily, daintily, I have mine set at the beginning setting. 
and tighten that down. We don't want to over tighten it. You don't want to strip it. You don't want to break it. Make your day not very fun. You're not going to like yourself if that happens. Okay, so I'm good. I know all of our lug nuts all fit and we're all good. So now I can take those off. And if you're like me, you realize that you did this completely wrong. So see, look, I even just did this and I still made this mistake. You gotta take the rotor off before, there we go. So you guys get to see the bloopers too. Uh, before you can put the uh, the rotors, the uh, the bracket has to go on. Now the orientation of this, this is why I did this. I did this before the video, then you think I would remember. So originally when you took these bolts off, you took them off from this direction. Well, if you strap this up right here, you will not clear. It actually ends up going the other way. So you're gonna go now, you're gonna go this way through. And as soon as I can find what I did with the other one. So the bracket actually, again, I have no instructions on any of this guys. I had to kind of figure it out on my own. So again, that's that size 16. So we'll tighten it down. I, uh, I don't usually suggest that you use an impact tightening things down. That's how you end up breaking things. But uh, I usually take my impact to take stuff off. I might get a bolt, you know, close to being done with my impact, but I won't actually silent it down. So after you tighten these down, make sure they're tightened very well, especially because I'm using just a tiny little wrench. I'm going to come back with my 16 on my half. And we're going to give it a little bit more juice. There we go. There's probably a torque spec for that somewhere. I bought these third, you know, bought these from a guy who bought these from a guy who bought these from a guy. So I don't know exactly what the torque specs are on that. If you can look them up, put them in my comment section. I'd love you. I'll add it to the video later if you can find that. But uh, for me, it's always been, yep, that's tight enough. About that tight. It's about how much torque. Uh, I'm a bigger guy. So I can usually, you know, I, I, I can I can do 10 pounds of torque right there. Just, to, just 10 pounds right there. Here's 10 pounds. No problem. All right, so... Now that we backtracked, clean this hub up a little bit, go back to the big rotor. Line up our position screw. started by hand always don't ever use a power tool to start a screw for you that's how you cross threads and that's how you take simple small jobs like this one and turn them into something massive so we'll go back again again normally I would not suggest using an impact Going very lightly on that on my number on my light setting so there we go new rotor right needs cleaned up all that now on your brimbos on the back side you can see you've got these two holes my brakes are actually gonna sit like this my new brakes are getting all nice and dirty already love it so these two holes here are what's gonna go on the bracket over back here so we now have a bracket here and a bracket here and if you've taken uh, before, beforehand, I expanded all my pistons out, so I have plenty of room in my pads. So these are these are four piston Brembos. There's a small and a big, and a small and a big. They're offset. So you just line up your holes, slide on, wiggle it in. Ba ba. Now, hopefully, your kit also came with these. These are what's going to be obviously to cap it on. These are seven sixteenths by 20 pitch fine thread. Um, I had to order some more off Amazon is the reason why I know that because I went to all my local hardware stores 
and none of them had it. While they did have 7 16 everybody had uh, coarse thread. Nobody had the 20 fine thread. So you're just going to take, and uh, these are actually going to be, these are not going to be metric. If I remember correctly, like I said, I think they should be 7 16 Pardon me while I grab some sockets. Nope. There we go. So they are a half inch um, actual socket to tighten them up, but they are considered a 7 16 by 20 pitch thread. So we'll just take these. Again, we start everything by hand. Get it nice and tightened down. We have a washer that we put on there first. And just find that bottom one, tighten it down. Kind of doing all this blind same time we are you know just kind of feel your way back there tuck your head back there if you can like i said i'm i'm kind of a big guy so it can be difficult to get myself in these smaller positions and now i'm blocking the camera but there we go and get myself if you guys are interested to know if you want to take off these to separate the calibers and take them in half it is a uh, number 10 Allen to get these off and get the caliper separated. It took quite a lot of pressure to get them separated. That wasn't no joke. So we're going to take these. Obviously, we're going to tighten these down. Again, I'm sure there are some specs here. Um, I'm imagining the original bolt tolerances or, or whatever, but uh, I'm going to give it about that much pressure. I believe my uh, good there's a, a good gentleman over at Vice Gip Garage that uh, uses a very similar torque wrench system. Uh, gives it about that much. Don't stretch your bolts. Don't go crazy. But you can generally, after you've wrenched enough and you've tightened enough bolts down, you'll know which ones really, really need some seriousness. Uh, feels like these threads should have probably ran a thread chaser over it first. They're going, but I can definitely feel one of those threads is not so great ski. But we're there now. Anytime you use, you know, do use stuff, it's probably a good idea to run a thread chaser and that sort of thing off all the bolts just make sure I'm tightened up back here if I could find my extension aroni down here somewhere probably with my 10 millimeter somewhere you know how that goes oh, we'll just crawl back here oh yeah we're actually running out we have a need a deeper socket so we need a deeper half inch just so happen to have it and that'll take care of my extension problem anyways so i was running out of room there uh burying the socket in there we go a couple more turns give it about yeah about that much and check the top one give it about that much and we'll kind of clean our calipers off a little bit there from here we now have the turner brake lines and you can see they're going to run um, actually just shy it looks like so uh, these are the E36 Turner brake lines what I'll probably have to do you may want to look at uh, because this is a Brembo aftermarket system they obviously tie up but these do not appear or well it seems like because they're on the far side of the caliper rather than the top side of the caliper we are just short just shy by a couple inches uh, what I'll probably end up doing is I'll, I'll disconnect um, from the back wall here and just kind of gingerly bend that pipe down a little bit or add a little bit more bend to it get myself back around to my brake lines i might also look and see if the e46 brake lines are longer and i may just need to get myself e46 brake lines so live and learn because uh, this again this is for the e46 330i systems but if you change the rotor 
and uh, which you should have anyway. You should get the rotor with it anyways. Don't just get the calipers. But if you just buy calipers, this is the E46 rotor from a 330i. Standard. Not an M3, nothing crazy. Just a regular rotor. If you get the M series, it's going to use a bigger knuckle and it won't fit. So if you have an M, you need to make sure that you're getting M rotors. Um, I believe, don't quote me on this because I don't have an M, but I do believe that uh, if you have the M rotor, you can still bolt this caliper up to it. I believe the actual overall is pretty similar, uh, maybe within one or two millimeters. Um, you'd have to check. It may take an extra washer or something like that. Again, I don't have the setup, so I can't tell you perfectly. But in essence, uh, I have to bleed, bleed my brake lines, which uh, there are many videos about how to do that. Um, I need to change out all my fluids anyway, so I will do the other corner, bleed my brake lines, and then figure out if I am going to reorder uh, possibly the E... I'll, I'll check and see if the E46 front brake lines are an inch or two longer. They're really close. It's not... I mean, we're talking about maybe an inch or two, um, and, and it's just because of where that bracket's mounted, I could easily uh, give that brake line just a little, you know, just a little massage, if you will. Just a little, eek, a little eek, and that would take care of the problem. Um, so we'll see on that. I don't know if I'll, because um, I also, you know, maybe with articulation and turning left or right, it might also need more room when I turn. Uh, the other thing that you need, you have to have 18 inch rims. I, maybe works on 17s. I wouldn't try it. I wouldn't tempt yourself. Um, I'm going to bolt my 18s up and hopefully uh, we'll, we'll throw them on here right now. And uh, I'm just going to throw them up and mock them up for the moment because I still got to do the brake lines. But let's, uh, me and you together, this will be the moment of truth. Get some of these tool skis out of the way. And we will see. Hopefully, I mean, I, I, I did roughly check this before uh, with the rotors on the back sides of the tires, but uh, the first time I actually set them up here. Okay. Oh, I am. Oh, <laughs> my foolishness. No wonder why I was having trouble. So, uh, sorry, I forgot because of my Megan coilovers, I have to have spacers. So I was rubbing right now on my coilovers. So we have to put that spacer in there. Um, anytime you run coilovers on the E36, you gotta add a spacer. Okay. All right. So, oh, hub slipping around on me, but you can see guys, it works. I mean, we are completely clear. We are rotating and that is some big, beautiful Brembo's behind our E36. So again, guys, if you can track down, these are old, these are older Brembo. Uh, I believe they're GT class, four piston caliper Brembo's. Uh, I picked mine up off the marketplace. I know I have seen a couple other sets. Clean these up a little bit, getting dirty already, but they're bound to get dirty anyways. I know there's a couple other sets out there, and I know some of you guys are looking to get some big brake kits on your E36s, and I think this might be one of the cheapest ways to go. Uh, I looked at the, the uh, you know, the couple different swaps from like the, um, the I, 140s, I think they are, the 140i's. You can take their Brembo's if you can find one that's in a junkyard. And you need a couple extra brackets that are provided from like, you know, R1 race and stuff like that. But for factory bolt up, no extra brackets or nothing. If you can find these Brembo's, they go to they go to the non-M 330i's. They're out there. I have a feeling they're going to disappear real quick after people start catching on to this, but it's bolt up. It really is. Um, longer brake lines. And, and I could realistically use my stock brake lines. That is one thing that might, you know, in the interim while I'm waiting to figure out either a longer brake line, my stock brake lines will 100% work. Um, and I also am going to eventually be going to the Chase Bay boosterless system. And that's going to add its own lines in as well. So 
Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. And, uh, yeah. Big brakes on the E36. See you next time.